Okay. So yesterday when I, or last time I saw you, when we assigned this, I mentioned do this the same way you would have done like problem seven on your test, okay? Which means you draw a picture, you use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side, and then you use the sides to find all the ratios. So let's go ahead and do that. So the sides we have here, the information they gave us is cosine is negative, square root of three over five, quadrant three. So I drew, drew the picture to reflect that information. So that means I'm missing this leg here. So to use Pythagorean theorem to find that, I'm going to need to go like negative square root of three squared plus some other number squared equals five squared, correct? So then if we simplify that, five squared is 25. What's the square of a square root? Three. three. So then we would subtract that 3 from both sides. So we would have b squared equals 25 minus 3, which is 22. So then that other leg is the square root of 22. Now be careful, even though that's the number we got from Pythagorean theorem, look at your graph and the quadrant it's in. Is it positive square root of 22 or negative square root of 22? That's a negative square root of 22 because it's going downward in that quadrant 3. So now we should be able to simply go in and fill in the other five uh, ratios that they want us to find just using the definitions of those ratios. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be negative square root of 22 over 5. Cosecant would be the reciprocal of that. So 5 over the negative square root of 22, but then that would need rationalized. Have you guys learned to rationalize so that you don't need to like sit and write it out? You can just kind of do it in your head to that point. So it would be 5, negative 5 square root 22 over 22, wouldn't it? My numbers are all kind of running into each other here. I didn't quite leave myself enough space. Okay. And then since cosine is negative square root of 3 over 5, let's go ahead and use the reciprocal identity to flip that over. So negative 5 square root 3 over 3 should be the secant. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So negative square root of 2 and 22 over negative square root of 3 gives us a positive answer. So positive square root of 22 over positive square root of 3, right? But then we would need to rationalize that. So multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Wouldn't that give us the square root of 66 over 3? Do you hear how I did that? Does that make sense? And is that correct? As far as you guys can tell. Okay. So then cotangent would be the opposite of that, square root of 3 over square root of 22. So that means it would be um, square root of 66 over 22 instead, wouldn't it, by flipping it over? Is it okay I'm not showing those details? Are you guys okay with that? These are kind of a little bit ugly numbers to work with. but Okay. Now in the past, the way that um, I've felt like this assignment was requiring you or asking you to do these problems is a more complicated way using Pythagorean identity. So I just kind of want to show you the idea behind that and also show you that you're going to get the same answer regardless of which way you do it. Okay? So if we do, you, if we do the same problem using Pythagorean identities instead, we have cosine. So the most logical Pythagorean identity to use would be the one that has sine and cosine in it and then solve it for sine, correct? So I've kind of written out this already, so I'm just going to go step by step through it. So there's our Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And we can solve that for sine. So solving that for sine would mean subtracting the cosine from both sides and then square rooting, which means we could either have a positive or a negative answer. Does that mean that there's going to be two answers? No, that, that means it's either going to be positive or negative depending on what quadrant it's in. So we have to carefully consider the quadrant to determine whether it's going to be positive or negative. This one is in quadrant three where sine is negative, sine and cosine are both negative, so therefore we ignore the positive part of the square root and we're just doing the negative. 
Okay, so now we know what cosine is. Cosine was negative square root of 3 over 5. Isn't that the information they gave us? So we created ourselves a formula that we can now plug that into. So we can plug in what they gave us. Cosine is the negative square root of 3 over 5. Just simply plug that into the formula. This squared means we're taking that number and squaring it. So that would be positive 3 over 25. And then we're taking and subtracting that from 1. So we need a common denominator, 25 over 25, right? So what's 25 over 25 minus 3 over 25? Yeah, 25 over 25 minus 3 over 25 is 22 over 25. But that's still in the square root. Oh, I did write that out there. Look, I forgot I did that already. So then we still have the square root of 22 over 25, and we have to simplify that. Well, the square root of 22 doesn't simplify, but the square root of 25 does, and it's 5. And we also need to remember what we determined at the very beginning, that because it's in quadrant 3, sine is negative. So our final answer for sine is negative square root of 22 over 5. Did we get the same answer either way that we did when we did it this way? Yeah. And it's still kind of like using Pythagorean theorem. We kind of did the same process to get the 22. However, I feel like this method is easier and less likely to result in mistakes. That's just my own personal opinion. Does that mean that you have to do it this way or that you should do it this way or that you shouldn't do it this way? No, this is just an alternative. If this makes more sense to you to actually use a formula like a Pythagorean identity and find it that way, then use it. If this way makes less sense to you, then just take it, file it away in that gray matter brain of yours somewhere and be aware that that you can use identities for stuff like that but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way to do it sometimes it might be but in this case I prefer the other method okay are we good so if we'd had time yesterday I would have or last time I would have looked at that with you because in the past that's how I've made my students do it but I just don't feel like it's worth the extra work how would you go about finding the other ones like how would you take this information now and find the other ratio, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent? So you would do the reciprocal of sine to get, yeah, probably just reciprocals. And once you found those, you could use the other Pythagorean identities to find tangent and cotangent after you have secant and cosecant. It is. It really is a lot of work. That's why I like the other method better, because I think it's a lot more straightforward get all the numbers and then you just find the ratios.